Alright then everyone, so hello and welcome to mini contest number 6. So, one thing that's a little different this time around, we actually have uh, 5 people participating, which is, in some ways it's great, because yay, 5 people are participating, but in some ways it's just sort of like, uh, well, now we can't include everyone in the results video, which is kind of unfortunate, but it's more of a restraint of the laws of physics and our own ability to keep track of screens at once. It's hard to keep track of four screens at once, which is why there's probably a lot of mistakes in my earlier video's commentary, as well as there's going to be mistakes in my later video's commentary, because it's hard to analyze four runs at the same time, but unfortunately, uh, one person's going to have to be singled out this time, which feels just a little bit awkward to have exactly five people participating, because I don't like singling one person out to not be in the results video, but, you know, that's how it is sometimes, so. Uh, sorry to love color magic, because your run will not be included, unfortunately. But I will put a link to it in the description. The way I'm going to have it work is if you've uploaded a video on your own channel, like an unlisted video, I'll link to that video on your own channel. So, I mean, you can get kind of get the views on for yourself. It makes more sense that way if you are behind the top four. But if you have not uploaded a video, I'll upload a video on my own channel instead, and I'll just leave it unlisted with a link in the description of this one in case anyone happens to want to watch it. So that way I can at least give credit where it's due and have the video up somewhere to watch. So, uh... Oh shoot. Where, where are the four? Jackamus is in the bottom right. Tenka is in... Top left. Cecil is in the bottom left, and... Let Creativity Play, who is our new challenger, is in the top right. Uh, Let Creativity Play, I, I know him from YouTube somewhat, and he's a great guy, does, and correct me if I'm wrong, but him and Jackamus, I think, have the most speedrunning experience out of everyone who's been participating. I, I can't say that for sure, because I don't know what speedrunning experience other people have had so far. But, anyway, uh, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah. Sigma Chief wasn't able to participate this time, unfortunately, but I still think it would be fitting to take a moment of silence for a dearly departed friend. Yeah, that should be long enough. Okay. <laughs> so, then, let's get started. I suppose I... This one was just as close as the last two, but I suppose that's a modicum of being such a short uh, video, such a short task to do. And a lot of the people have the same basic building blocks of their strategies, but every little optimization and counts and no two runs were the same. I, Tenka, I, in fact, mentioned that he was worried that there would be a whole bunch of identical runs to his. That would pretty much just be split-second differences because of that, but no, not at all. Every Every strategy was a little bit different, at least. Again, with some of the same building blocks. And Tenka's, ironically, was one of the more off-the-walls ones that I don't think uh, anybody was going to use. Six out of the ten characters managed to get used by someone. Everyone used Strago, Cyan, and Celeste, but Mog, Gao, and Realm also saw use from people. And three out of the four runs used different people here as the fourth character. So, that, that's nice to see. Alright, three... Two, one, go. Alright, commentary's gonna be hard to keep up with. I find it funny how everybody realized that, okay, Realm is slightly faster to talk to even though Setzer is closer, just because Setzer has an extra line of dialogue. And you can see, Tenka throws Gao in his party, he's the only one of the six people to do that. LCP throws uh, Realm in his party, and him and LCM both had the, probably the most similar strats, but LCM's was... Uh, a little bit slower, I think, because he partly because he wasn't using a controller. I, I don't think that's my guess anyway. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, LCM was using the keyboard. But anyway, uh, we've got people renaming people. That's one of the constituents of the challenge, and it was really just to hide the fact that you can sell 95 rename cards. Well, partially just to hide the fact that you could sell that to get exactly 3,000 gil, which is useful in a couple ways, but. Really, the main use for that everybody uses it for here is to buy two poison rods, and this isn't important. Although Jackamus, actually, in the bottom right here, you'll see he's going to get the Green Beret, which sells for 1500 so he's using that to buy a third poison rod. So that's his, uh, I guess, claim to fame in his strat that's different from everyone else. He's the only person who's buying three poison rods by selling the Green Beret. Uh, everyone else came up with 
something different. LCP, well, who should I comment on first? This is kind of fast, I'm worried I'm gonna do this all out of order. So Tenka, so Cecil has reached the uh, bomb fight, and ev these bomb battles are important for everyone because a central tenet of everybody's strategy is to learn Exploder and use it. However, LCP, as you may notice, has Realm, and if you don't know, Realm can actually sketch uh, Exploder from the bombs, so if you if you want to put in the time to use that somewhat luck-reliant strat, you can have another party member dead with Exploder for free, and that's how LCP gets away without using a second poison rod. I mean, buying a third poison rod. Cecil's strategy is a little bit different. Instead of... Uh, you'll, you'll notice that he whacked Cyan to poison Cyan, and to get use the proc from the poison rod, that's what saves him an extra poison rod to that... Uh, that uh, Jackamus needed the Green Beret for. And that ends up saving him a lot of time, because it's pretty much just like, whack Cyan, done. But I know Jackamus said he was using an old strat, because uh, it was a... Uh, it, this is an older run of his, and he wasn't able to find the time to improve it, even though he found a better strategy that he never actually disclosed to me. But... <laughs> And you'll see that uh, Tank is buying a Revivify, and you're probably thinking, well, why on earth did you just randomly walk around the airship to buy a Revivify? And you'll see that in a couple seconds, but you'll notice that Tenki cleverly uses the time that he's uh, buying the Revivify to do the poison damage, whereas everyone else has to walk around a bit somewhere else and take some time out specifically. Okay, so it's getting close to the end for both LCP and Cecil, because LCP and Cecil both are in the battle, everyone's poisoned and almost dead. And Strago can use Exploder, so Strago's using Exploder for LCP, and then he's got two characters to die. And now he starts up Explodering for Cecil as well, so it's gonna be close. But a bomb uses Blaze here, which kinda delays LCP, and but LCP still manages to pull it off by 12 thirtieths of a second, according to my uh, video player. So that's even closer than the other one, which is uh, exactly half a second IRC. And Tenka, you'll notice he threw a Revivify on Gao after using an Undead Rage. That's, that was pretty clever, actually. I wasn't expecting that from anyone, but that is kind of what happened there. So, uh, yeah, nice job for thinking of that. And Jack missed lost a little bit of...